nothing like a good seat there. Welcome to the show. I'm Tom Kirkland. <laughs> and I'm Larry Smith. Glad you're with us. We've got a blockbuster Saturday night, and we started off the night at the fights. Mike Tyson's return. He looked pretty good. Yeah. Briefly. That's right. It was short and really not so sweet for boxing. Four years from his last heavyweight bout, four months after his release from prison, Mike Tyson busted back into the ring for real against 26-year-old challenger Peter McNeely. Now, this fight got started just the way McNeely said it would. He went right after Tyson, charging at him in the corner, and within 15 seconds, McNeely was knocked down, struggling to get uh, his wits, took a standing eight count, went right back after Tyson. He managed to catch Tyson with some leather, but McNeely catching way too much leather, and then within a few more seconds, he was down, the result of a thunderous uppercut from Tyson, and then as McNeely appeared to be ready to get back to resume to the, the action, Tyson standing off in his corner, inexplicably, McNeely's corner, trainer man Vic Vecchione stepped in, and that's it, automatic disqualification. McNeely out just 89 seconds into this, his biggest fight. Once again, Tyson rolls on. It's really hard to get much of a read on what he could do, although he did have those big punches, and they were snapping off. Afterward, our Mick Charles, who's been there all week, caught up with the ex-champ Mike Tyson. Mike, this was no uh, feeling out process. This was a search and destroy mission. Huh? Well, he jumped on me first. You hit him. You had him down six seconds in. I'm just, I'm just happy. God blessed me with this victory. How about your timing, quickness? What was coming together? What wasn't? I mean, it wasn't um, a. I don't have no idea. I just out of instinct, I hit four. He, he just jumped on me right away, and I hit four. Man. Did you get hit, Mike? Um, yeah, I believe he hit me off the side of the head. And what did you feel? Was it a confounding moment when they threw in a towel like they did? I, I didn't understand that. I was just, I was ready for the kill. I'm a blood man. I'm always ready for the kill. And I, when I saw that happen. I'm just happy. I'm, I'm lucky and lucky. No one got hurt, and I'm blessed with the victory. Mike, we were watching that stare down, and you looked like a lion just looking at its prey, waiting for him. What was going on? We have to remind you, and hopefully by now we don't, the big story is still Mike Tyson's return after more than four years away from the ring. It was a brief return, but still a return nonetheless. And our Nick Charles is standing by in Las Vegas. We go to him now with the fight wrap-up. Nick? Right, Larry, and still the after effects lingering in the air here in Las Vegas. It took 89 seconds for Mike Tyson to smash his way to victory tonight, but it took an opponent who was ready, willing, and able to be a victim. Peter McNeely came to fl fight. He knew nothing but a, but, a, but a forward gear, so he came and charged Tyson immediately. But it took Tyson just within, ten, well, six seconds, maybe within 10 seconds, to club him to the canvas. McNeely got up and charged again but Tyson then closed in for the kill. And when he knocked McNeely to the canvas the second time, McNeely's corner had seen enough. They climbed into the ring and stopped the fight. You, you right there. Peter, were you ready to continue fighting? Were you ready to continue I'm a fighting? fighter, I come to fight. I always feel like I'm, I'm always gonna try to fight, but the people around me that coach me from the outside looking in through the looking glass, they can tell better. They made a decision at that point, which I stand behind, because they love me and I love them. Peter, describe that last right uppercut by Mike Tyson, the one that put you down. Say again. Please describe the right uppercut, the last one by Mike Tyson that put you down. It was so quick, I didn't even know the damn thing was an uppercut. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't even know what the hell hit me. I didn't even know what hit me. Um, he didn't even know what hit him. So McNeely, once again, was game. Everybody knew it would be a collision fight. We talked about it going in. And Vin Vecchione, uh, McNeely's trainer, who made the decision to stop the fight because it was ruled a disqualification 89 seconds in, told us just this morning that that was the way McNeely was going to fight. It's the only way, he said afterwards, to fight and possibly have a chance to beat Mike Tyson, to match power with power. Well, McNeely tried tonight, and he was no match. Mike Tyson in 89 seconds, it's difficult to know what he really proved to himself. His power, his shock power is certainly still there, but he was missing as much as he was hitting the mark the, tonight. That'll come as the rust continues to shake off, but if he could fight every opponent like this, that's a rather questionable thing as he escalates and fights more difficult opponents. That's the story right now from Las Vegas, but we'll be along to uh, tell you more as it unfolds. Let's go back to you guys. What a night. So you decided it was worth the money. Just on curiosity alone, decided to plunk down your 45 or 50 bucks to see the return of Iron Mike Tyson. You get your buddies together, ready for the big pay-per-view party. And you got exactly what you expected from Peter McNeely. Now you're wondering, why did I spend all that money? Charlie Steiner in Las Vegas, the story of a round one knockout. 
There will be a lot of people standing around the water cooler on Monday morning wondering why in the world they spent 50 bucks on what they saw here tonight in Las Vegas. That is a disqualification of Peter McNeely after he was knocked down twice in the first round, disqualified when his trainer, Vinny Vecchione, jumped in, Mike Tyson winning in a minute and 29 seconds. All in all, it was much ado about nothing. The real action was outside the ring. It began with a demonstration prior to the match, National Organization of Women. Not a big demonstration, but a demonstration nonetheless. Mike Tyson arrived at the arena about two hours before he would set foot into the ring. It was a scene inside the MGM Grand. It was a sellout. Peter McNeely arrived on the scene first to so-so cheers, but then the star of the show, Mike Tyson, made his way into the ring with that familiar towel, and there it was. In the first round, the only round of the fight, it was all Tyson. Knocked down McNeely early, knocked him down about a minute later, and when Vinny Vecchione jumped into the ring, it was game, set, and match, a disqualification at 1 minute and 29 seconds. So Mike Tyson improves his record to 42-1 and one with 37 knockouts, his first fight in four years and two months. After the fight, Tyson was elated. I was extremely excited. You know, I just, as I said before, I forget how much you really love this sport what, until you totally anticipate into it. Can you give us an idea what was going through your mind when you hear the people screaming and all that? I, I don't know. I just, I'm just here to fight how much I really love this. I wish my mother and Cus was here to see the um, festivities that were going on out here. Please take us through the first round. I can't. I'm just happy. God bless me with the victory. I'm just there fighting. He came at me and I continue to fight and, and pray be to God that I won tonight. I, I, I like to think that I can box when I want to. But this guy, man, he's just, he's right on you. He's strong as a friggin' bull. I mean, you gotta meet, I, I, in my mind, I gotta meet force with force. So I just did what I thought, it, the, the, the choice call at that time, I thought I did what was, I, was right. Maybe I could have tied him up. Maybe I could have gone back to Jeb. But that's not what I did. This is what happened. Well, the whole fight lasted just a minute and 29 seconds. Johnny Gill's rendition of the national anthem lasted two minutes and 36 seconds. A long anthem, a short fight. The time it took for Tyson to get from the locker room to the ring was 48 seconds. He was in the ring for 5 minutes and 18 seconds. 7 minutes and 35 seconds of face time for Mike Tyson for $50 or 1500 at ringside. Joining me now is Al Bernstein and USA Boxing writer John Saracino. Look, first to you, Al. What did we learn about Mike Tyson and his fighting ability tonight and Peter McNeely? Well, it's interesting. This was all about what would Mike Tyson look like. He was faced with something quite different. Peter McNeely, and Don King was right about this, is about the only guy we've seen go head-to-head -head right there with Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was forced to counterpunch, show us some good side-to-side -side movement, and show us his hand speed. And he showed us all of that. We may never see that again in the next three or four or five fights from Tyson, but he showed us that. So he was forced to adapt to something quite different, and he did it very well. John Saraceno, the business of boxing now. After a minute and 29 seconds with Peter McNeely, and there's talk of Buster Mathis Jr. being the next opponent, how in the world will Don King sell this one to America? Well, if it goes pay-per-view, he's got a hard time selling Buster Mathis Jr., although Buster does have a bit of a name thanks to his dad. Uh, the odd thing there was that Custom Motto, Mike T Tyson's play trainer and, and manager, for a time trained Buster Mathis Sr. So there's a little bit of history there too, Charlie. But certainly it's going to be difficult for them to sell that pay-per-view. The price probably will not be what it was for this fight, so they'll get a little boost there. Quickly, in just a couple of words, was tonight good for boxing? I think it was intriguing for boxing, and I'm sure that people will tell you it's good Tyson's back in boxing, creates a lot of revenue, etc. So in that sense, I guess it was good. Did they get their money's worth? I think it was a disgrace to boxing. I think Mike Tyson was embarrassed when he was up on the podium. I think that's why some of his answers were short and, and curt to the media. I think he knew exactly what went on tonight. This was a setup fight. It was obvious what was going to happen long ago. John Saraceno and Al Bernstein will join me first thing on Sunday morning. We'll be live on Sports Weekly at about 10 o'clock Eastern time. For now, for Al Bernstein, John Saraceno, Charlie Steiner at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, sending it back to Sports Center. So Cans Keister was on the canvas six and a half seconds after the opening bell.
either Peter McNeely is no good at math, or maybe Mike Tyson really did rattle his gourd last night in Las Vegas. McNeely's trainer, Vin Vinny Vecchion, says McNeely thought the ref had stopped the fight on the three knockdown rule. Yeah. One, three. Given McNeely's ability to count, it's doubtful that he will give up the sweet science for rocket science anytime soon, but he earned his nest egg without getting his shell too badly cracked. Charlie Steiner joins us live and lucid from Las Vegas. Chaz? Jack, one out of two isn't bad for this hour <laughs> of the day. You are looking at a live picture of the MGM Grand and the ringside wasteland. It was about 28 years ago, the Who played the Isle of Wight. They played the song Baba O'Reilly. They talked about teenage wasteland because of the mess that was left over. You see ringside wasteland this morning. It was, by all accounts, a very bizarre evening. Only in boxing can an expected outcome end unexpectedly. But the big star of the show, of course, was Mike Tyson, and he packed the arena, 15,000 plus. There were, uh, at ringside, $1,500 seats, the worst seats in the house, 200 bucks. Peter McNeely came out first, got a modest ovation, and then the star of the show with the towel over his shoulders, Mike Tyson, the crowd went crazy. There really wasn't much of a fight to talk about. As expected, Mike Tyson had his way with Peter McNeely, knocking him down early, knocking him down a second time, a national anthem that ran two minutes and 37 seconds, a fight that lasted a minute and 29 seconds, when all was said and done, when Vinny Vecchione, the trainer of Peter McNeely, jumped into the ring, officially it was listed as a disqualification. Mike Tyson is back in his own peculiar way. 42 and 1, 37 knockouts. His first fight in four years and two months, and after the fight, as you might expect, he was elated. Do you want to go for the title in your next fight? I'm just, you know, I, mean, I have a lot to learn. I'm still cultivating sure, my skills. I've been off for four years. Of course, someone would want to fight me after four years. That shows how brave they are. And still, maybe I still could be the champion after four years fighting for the title. But I'm just interested in cultivating my skills and be the best I can be. I, I, I like to think that I can box when I want to. But this guy, man, he's just, he's right on you. He's strong as a friggin' bull. I mean, you gotta meet, I, I, in my mind, I gotta meet force with force. So I just did what I thought, it, the, the, the choice call at that time, I thought I did what was, I, was right. Maybe I could have tied him up. Maybe I could have gone back to the jab. But that's not what I did. This is what happened. Al Bernstein and John Saracino join me in just a moment. But first, you take a look at the quickest knockouts in Mike Tyson's career. Last night, it was a minute and 29 seconds. Relatively speaking, that was slow work, but it was for $25 million, after all. So he had to earn some of that. Here's Al and John Saracino as we are just beginning to wake up here in Las Vegas. The, the, whole, the whole notion of Vinny Vecchione jumping into the ring last night after the second knockdown has overshadowed what we didn't expect to be much of a fight to begin with. Well, and by the way, they are checking into holding the portion of the purse that goes to manager Vinny Vecchione because of his action. The commission wanting to investigate whether, in fact, he jumped in too quick and for the wrong reasons. It is true. Peter McNeely came out very game, rushed to Mike Tyson, actually landed some punches in the very short time that he was in the ring against him. But even that gets overshadowed. And only in boxing do you end up with a guy who gets knocked out quickly, but even the good that he does is overshadowed by the fact that his manager jumped in what some would say too quickly. And again, it creates, as you said, an unexpected ending to an expected ending. USA Today's boxing writer, John Saracino, joins us this morning. John, uh, what were you able to decipher out of the performance from, John, uh, from uh, Mike Tyson last I thought night? Mike looked okay, Charlie. I mean, you got a guy bum-rushing you that way and backing you up against the ropes immediately. And I thought Mike handled himself pretty well. Um, you saw some elusiveness when, when he was able to avoid some punches and counterpunch. And, of course, Mike's trademark is, is his punching power, and uh, he always wants to be an exciting fighter. He wants to take care of business. I think he felt that he was robbed at the end there a little bit because he wanted to come in and finish the job and was unable to do so. We will be back throughout the morning, Al and John and I, and a little bit later on we will take a look at the future of the heavyweight division after the 1 minute and 29 second dispatch of Peter McNeely last night by Mike Tyson. Jack? All right, Charlie, thanks very much. For a point of reference, let's say... Mike Tyson trained four hours per day, every day, between his release from his prison term for rape and last night's fight, including all that training time and the minute and a half he spent actually fighting. His $25 million in earnings comes out to an average wage of 
$42,808.22 an hour. As Charlie said, we'll have more from Las Vegas a little bit later. You can pick any letter in the alphabet and find a word to describe the 89 seconds of sham boxing fans will put through Saturday night. J for joke, P for pitiful would work. Sucker punch viewers who forked over $49 for the fight that wasn't between Mike Tyson and Peter McNeely are feeling like a bunch of cheated chumps. To help you get over it, here's a look back on Don King's charade and Peter McNeely's 15 minutes of fame. Hurricanes in the house! It is exciting, it's provocatively beautiful, and it, it is spiritually redeeming because you're going to get your true dollar value for your entertainment dollar. If you buy now, you can save. $39.95. Now, see, be quiet while I'm talking. No, I would. As Larry Holmes said for many years, I'm not getting my just due. When they start to talking about, well, Peter McNeely ain't fought nobody. Stop making well, a mountain out of a molehill. I molehill out of a mountain, a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> Neither did Muhammad Ali, Joe Lewis, Joe Frazier, George Foreman, uh, Jack Dempsey, Sugar Ray Robinson. All of them at the time of their growing, they were doing the same thing, going through the metamorphosis. When I wrapped Mike Tyson in, my, in a cocoon of horror. In a cocoon of horror. In fact, Stallone, Rocky, the original, called Peter McNeely on the telephone only yesterday wishing him good luck. I reject the Rocky Balboa theory. I'm Hurricane Peter McNeely. This is reality. It's not fiction. I'm going to ask you all a question. Aren't I a little bit better than everybody's making me out to be? Yes. Huh? Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. But what happens after Peter McNeely gets boiled like a New England lobster? If you can't have fun in, in any sort of business, you're, you, you better get out. I'm also, I also talk myself into things. I psych myself up by doing things, by the things I say at the press conferences. And then I start, you know, you start to believe in yourself. I'm Hurricane Peter McNeely from Medfield, Mass. On Saturday night, watch me kick Tyson's Mr. McNeely had a cute statement. I'm just ready. Ready to fight. Which is going to last longer, the fight of the Star Spangled Banner. So if he comes out and he comes out aggressive and he tries to actually win this fight, uh, maybe 30 seconds, 40 seconds. I would guess anywhere between 10 and 20 seconds. I am going to knock out Mike Tyson. Somewhere between round 1 and 10. Do me a favor. Try to work on your confidence a little bit. How's that? How am I looking, baby? Peter McNeely has been picked as carefully as I pick a melon in the supermarket, all right? He's going to come running right out there and want to slug with Tyson. That's exactly what Tyson wants. The biggest event for viewing in the history of mankind. It was officially ruled a disqualification. And as far as I'm concerned, I did the right thing by my fighter. I thought it was the three knockdown rule, but I'd only been knocked out twice. That tells you how puzzled I was in my head. Congrats, Pete. Hey, hello. He came out punching and he was winging. I knew it would just be a matter of time before I catch him. I think it was a disgrace to boxing. I think Mike Tyson was embarrassed when he was up on the podium. I think that's why some of his answers were short and, and curt to the media. Mike, since you haven't fought in over four years, I was wondering who your first opponent was going to be. 